baby steps. Yeah. I mean, it's you can lose it like that. It takes one golf shot or one thing, and you lose your confidence. The confidence. And then you have to take baby steps to get it back. You're never going to get it all back at once. And I mean, it really is. I mean, I, you know, I I went through it with the yips like three times in my career, and I'd hit one bad putt, and then all of a sudden I, you know, it's in my head. I can't putt, and so. I mean, literally, it was just, let's, okay, let's start over. Let's start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. What do I need to work on in my putting? I need to focus on this. And then gradually, over time, it would come back. Um, but golf is so up and down, and it's so mental that, you know, I always get a kick out of when a player plays well for like six months, and everyone's like, oh, she, she or he's going to be on top forever. It's like, no, if you've played the the sport of golf, you know that someone's not going to be on top forever. Mm -hmm. It just does not happen in this game. I mean, I was, uh, I was, uh, yeah, Tiger. But I was uh, trying to win the 35th win because <laughs> the LPGA the rules, you have to win two separate majors. Mm -hmm. different, yeah, two different. So mm -hmm. I won two U.S. Years. Opens, but that didn't count. Uh, not good enough. So therefore, <laughs> instead of 30 wins and yeah. two majors, I had to win 35 events. Yeah, so I two. was getting close to the 35th one, and I had one to go. And I'm playing Rochester, and I'm just playing lights out because I'm going to get this over with, right? <laughs> and. I have a lead of, <coughs> I think, eight. Oh, wow. wow. You know, I mean, or yeah, maybe it was six. Sure. But anyway, it was a lot. And somebody walks by and says, what are you trying to do, lap us? You know, and I <laughs> said, well, if I could, yes, you know. Well, I lost by six. <gasps> wow. I just, you know, got out there and, and uh, hit one bad shot, as you're saying. And my mind was not there, you know, and I was trying so hard. I, no matter what I did, it wasn't good, you know, so. And the harder you try, yeah. the worse yeah. it gets, worse. too. And so, after that, I said, if it's going to be, it's going to be. Yeah. You know, and then, of course, I did. But. And you yeah, see a lot of it is, I mean, you talk about the pressure that's out there now. I mean, there's so much pressure from them all to do well, and the competition is so tight. And I think a lot of it might even do, you think of the equipment, I think this one thing that, you know, we had to hit two irons and, you know, yes. and out of long grass. Well, now you've got rescues and you've got yeah. hybrids and you've got metal woods and all these great wedges that we actually had it was a lot harder to play back then and score like they do now. So mm -hmm. the equipment is, e is put everybody more equal mm -hmm. because they don't have to be a great shot maker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we were shot makers, definitely. Yeah. I mean, we made up shots with clubs. Um, you know, when you had a, a, pit, a sand wedge, you'd make that into a lob wedge, which mm -hmm. now the lob wedge hits that shot for you. Mm -hmm. But you talk about pressure, like for Yanni, because I've talked to her a lot. And um, the thing about when I went through a bad streak for me, which was early, and I, I didn't play well. When was that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was really my third year on tour. It was my third year on tour. I won three tournaments, but I don't know how I did win them because I was struggling. <laughs> and every day, I was. I was yeah. struggling because when I would finish, what does knowing that say for the rest of us, <laughs> knowing what I could do and knowing what I wasn't doing was really tough. And I remember, you become very alone. You're you're alone a lot, and you're alone in your mind, and you're alone on the golf course. And when you're teeing off, you wish it was 18. And I felt that. And when I'd finish every round every day, I would go back to my room and cry, just cry. I had to to relieve the pressure because. When you'd walk off the golf course, you had to sign those autographs and you had to act like you were okay. But when you got back to your room, you were this totally, you know, just distraught person. I mean, I was. And I cried and I cried and I got through it that way. And I think for Yanni, she needs to go cry. She needs to not read the articles, not go home and hear all the stuff. Why aren't you winning? Why aren't you winning? You can't, when you're not playing well, you cannot surround yourself with people that want to know why you're not playing well. You've got to get people that are very positive because you're so alone in that situation. And you, yourself, are the only one that can get you out of it. And you've got to think every day positive. You've got to work hard. You've got to practice hard enough to where you say, okay, I got it. I've got this chip shot. I'm putting better. All these teachers and all this mental stuff, 
They can't help you. They haven't been in that situation. They don't know what you're feeling. They don't know the pressure you're feeling. They haven't stood over 10 footer to win a tournament and then make it or miss it and then lose in the playoff. They've never been there. You have to figure it out. You've got to work. You've got to get through it. And you are all by yourself. Even my dad couldn't help me through that. It was all about me getting me out of that situation. And for Yanni, she doesn't know how to do that. Her parents don't know a lot about golf, so they, they ask her questions. Why aren't you playing well? well? She told me she's trying her best, but then she sees the press, and then they ask her more questions. It is a, it was, it's a chain reaction to failure because you have to get out of it all by yourself. And that's how I did because then the next year I came back, and I, I didn't win as much, but I played well. And I had players like these players beating me. And I played well, and they played better. And that's what it's all about, is playing the way you know you can play. Mm -hmm. And Yanni's not getting that anymore. And it's just because of all the negative stuff that's surrounding her. And she cares. You know, you've got to almost not care when you're, when you're struggling, what people say, especially negatively. But it's all about you. You've got to do it yourself. Nobody can get you out of it. But also, when you were on your street, when your rookie year, when you came out, you, you won... The five tournaments in a row. Ridiculous, yeah. Okay. And I know for all of us can speak to this. When you get on a streak and you're playing really well, you have so much confidence. You you tee it up. You don't think anyone in that field can beat you. I mean, I've, I'm sure all of you would say at some point in time, you teed it up and said, nobody's beating me this week. I'm playing that good. So when someone gets on a streak like that, you know, it's easy to say, God, they're playing so well because... You know they're going to play like this forever, but it just it it the streak lasts a certain amount of time where you have that confidence, and then something breaks that confidence just enough mm -hmm. where you know all of a sudden when people see your name on the leaderboard, they're not scared of you anymore. Yeah. You know, and for a while Yanni had that. I know. You know. And I think what's hard too, Beth, when they were when Yanni was really playing well, there weren't a lot of golf tournaments. And for us, when I was playing well, I played, I knew my limits. It was usually three weeks in a row. And I could be playing great that third week. And people say, why don't you keep playing? I'm like, because I'm tired and I'm going to play myself right into bad golf. Mm. So when I took off after three weeks, I'd take off a week or two. I needed that to recharge. And then I came right back out and played the same way. Sometimes the players are playing so much that they don't have time to be normal, to rest to rest their mind, you know, all the stuff we have to do, signing autographs, going to parties, entertaining. You've got to rest. You've got, and, not, and you've got to walk away. And I think Annika was one that didn't believe she could just kind of walk away and then come back. She felt like she had to keep playing and playing to stay in that kind of shape. But you, I don't think you should do that as a player. You should rest, play, find your limit, then take off a week and then play. But because they didn't have that many tournaments, play, play, play. Well, then you play yourself into, like I said, bad habits. You get tired. You're not swinging the club right anymore. So you get in all this negative stuff started again because you couldn't rest. But I, I mean, I know that's what I had to do. Even though I was playing good, I always took off so that I knew I'd come back refreshed and, and eager to play, play again. Yeah.